Hello students and welcome back to the medicinal plants series of videos. Today we're going to continue by talking about the plants we can use in central nervous system pathologies. So expect to learn the plants we can use in insomnia, nervousness and anxiety, but also in depression, asthenia and stress, as well as in migraine. Hi, my name is Tommy. I am a human nutrition student and researcher at the university. What I do in these type of videos is to synthesize my classes so then I can explain and teach you the best and most valuable information you need to know. So let's begin this video by talking about the drugs we can use for insomnia, nervousness and anxiety. Okay, so here we have to define insomnia. It is a sleep disorder which involves the difficulty falling asleep and a daytime fatigue. On the other hand, anxiety has to do with unease, worry, fear and stress. It can also be excessive and the majority of the times is persistent. What are the medicinal plants, the drugs, we can use to treat these pathologies? Well, starting with the valerian root, this one right here. We use the dried underground parts, so the root and the rhizomes. It has a characteristic nauseating odor. The active ingredients are the epoxyridoid esters, essential oil, and non-volatile sesquiterpenes. Remember, 15 carbons. Actions. It is sedative, hypnotic, muscle relaxant, and antispasmodic actions. The adverse effects. An excess can give headaches, excitability, insomnia, which is weird, arrhythmias, and withdrawal. So be careful with the dose. The interactions can occur with alcohol, benzodiazepines and barbiturates. Can enhance its sedative effects. So we can find a synergism here. Contraindications not in pregnancy, lactation and children under 3 years of age. Do not use before driving or operating dangerous machinery because it can have sedative effects and hypnotic. Posology 2-3 to three grams of the drug or equivalent doses of dry extracts one or more times a day. Be very careful with the dose, as we saw here. An excess can give adverse effects. Then we have the passion flower. Passion flower herb, passiflora, is this one right here. The parts we use are the aerial part, the stems, leaves, flowers and fruits. It is similar to the valerian root for the insomnia and anxiety. The active ingredients are the flavonoids, alkaloids, pyranic derivatives and phytosterols. Action, sedative, anxiolytic, antispasmodic and muscle relaxant, so to promote sleep. Adverse effects, an excess can give nausea, vomiting and sedation. So be very careful here as well with the dose. Interactions could enhance the sedation of sedative drugs, a synergism. Contraindications, not in pregnancy, lactation and children under 12 years old. Posology, daily dose of 0.5 to 2 grams of drug or equivalent doses of other preparations. And then we have the hawthorn, which is this plant right here. We use the flowering tops. It is a thorny shrub with shortly petiolate leaves and inflorescences in corymb. The active ingredients are the flavonoids, 1-2% of hyperoside, and proanthocyanidins, 1-3%. to The action, cardiotonic, antiarrhythmic and coronary vasodilator effect. Sedative and muscle relaxant actions. Non adverse effects reported. Interactions do not combine with sedative drugs or cardiotonic heterocytes because of that potentiation of the effect, the synergism. Contraindications not in pregnancy, lactation, and children under 12 years old. And posology from 2 to 5 grams a day of powder drug or equivalent of 160 to 900 milligrams a day of hydroalcoholic extract. And then the last plant we use for the treatment of insomnia and anxiety is the lavender. Lavender, this beautiful plant right here, we use the flower and essential oil. It is from the Lamiaceae family. And the active ingredients are the essential oil, 1-3%, to which is rich in monoterpenes, tannins, coumarins, flavonoids and phenolic acids. The actions, well, sedative, of course, hypnotic as well, anxiolytic but also antibacterial, caminative, local analgesic, anti-inflammatory effects and the spasmolytic together with cholagog actions. Cholagog means that it promotes the biliary secretion. Adverse effects, no one reported. Interactions do not take with other sedative drugs, anxiolytics or alcohol because they can increase the effect. 
Contraindications, same as always, not in pregnancy, lactation, and children under 12 years old. Posology, infusion of 1 to 2 grams per 150 milliliters, 3 times a day. 1 to 4 drops a day of essential oil, and we can also have a topical use of it. Then we have depression. This is a mood disorder in which there is sadness, hopelessness, loss of interest, and fatigue. How can we treat depression with medicinal plants? Well, using these drugs, the Hypericum or St. John's wort. We have already seen this plant in the previous videos. The part we use are the flowering tops collected at full bloom, these ones. It is a perennial herbaceous plant, and the active ingredients are the naphthodendrons, flavonoids, derivatives of fluoroglucinol, tannins, xanthones, phytosterols, phenolic acids, and essential oil. The action? It's an antidepressant, of course, but it also has anxiolytic effects, anti-inflammatory effects, antispasmodic, antiviral, wound healing even, and antibacterial effect. Adverse effects may include the gastrointestinal discomfort, fatigue, headaches, and maybe allergic signs with a possible photosensitization when taken in higher doses. The interactions? Antidepressants. Anticoagulants? Oral contraceptives and immunosuppressants. So, again, that synergism with other drugs. Higher sedative effects will occur with alcohol, so taking account that as well. Contraindications not in pregnancy, lactation, and children under 12 years old. Again, posology standardized preparations with at least 0.3% of the naphthodendrons, which are the main active ingredient. It must be calculated as total hyperisin or 2 to 4. 0.5% of hyperforin. So these are the two ingredients. And then we have the saffron, this one right here. We use the stigma and petals. It is from the Iricidae family. The active ingredients are for sure the heterozinic carotenoids. Look at that color. But it also contains picrocrosine and the saffronal. The action, antioxidant, cytotoxic, hypolipidemic, hepatoprotective, so it protects the liver, neuroprotective as well, anxiolytic and antidepressant effects, the ones we need. Adverse effects, no one reported at doses used for culinary purposes. Interactions, no one reported really. Contraindications, not in pregnancy because it may stimulate uterine contractions and giving a premature birth, which is something we don't want. Posology, hydroalcoholic extracts of saffron stigma, 30 milligrams a day. Maximum Daily dose is 1.5 grams. Other uses as a spice in food, of course. And then we have to talk about asthenia and stress. So the asthenia is weakness, fatigue, and lack of energy. It can be due to an illness, medication, or even stress. And stress is a physical and emotional response to a perceived threat, to a challenge. It can be acute or chronic, and it has to do with anxiety, depression, and fatigue. So what are the medicinal plants, drugs, we can use to treat asthenia and stress as they are linked together? Well, we have the methylxanthines. These are, for example, the kola nut, the guarana seed, the yerba mate leaf, and the tea leaf. These are psychostimulants that reduce fatigue, improve concentration, and produce lethal addiction. The active ingredients are the methylated xanthines, indeed, mainly caffeine, but also Theophylline and theobromine. The action, well, we know what caffeine does. Central nervous system stimulant, diuretic, lipolytic, cardiac stimulant, peripheral vasodilator, also cerebral vasoconstrictor, smooth muscle relaxant and ergogenic. That's why it's used in sport. Adverse effects at high doses can give digestive and neurological symptoms. Be careful with caffeine. Interactions, well, it has an additive effect with the monamine oxidase inhibitors, and with the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Then also with digitalis, do you remember digitalis, has a higher toxicity. With camamazepine, clozapine and dipiradomol, it has a higher effect. It lowers the effect of benzodiazepines. And we have to mention that cimetidine, ephinylestradiol and mestranol are associated with a caffeine toxicity. Contraindications, caffeine allergy, of course, cardiovascular disorders, gastrointestinal ulcers and gastritis, as well as epilepsy, insomnia, and anxiety. 
And well, same as always, pregnancy, lactation and children under 12 years old. Posology, maximum 300 milligrams of caffeine a day. And do not consume it after 5 p.m. Take it after meals to avoid gastric irritation. Remember that if you go over 300 milligrams a day, you may suffer digestive and neurological symptoms. Well, and from methylxanthines, we can take a look in more detail at tea leaves. We use the young and flexible, maybe fermented, leaves from the tea plant. It has a psychoactive and medicinal property. The active ingredients are, well, the caffeine, the flavonoids, catechins, tannins, bronthocyanidols and phenolic acids. Actions? Central nervous system stimulant, of course. Diuretic vasoconstrictor and bronchodilator because of the theophylline and also lipolytic. As you can see, it's very similar because the main active ingredient is the same, caffeine. But it also has other actions such as hypolipidemic, antiplatelet, angioprotective, vitamin P action, so vasoprotective, anti-inflammatory, antidiarrheal, antibacterial, antiviral, and very important antioxidant because of those tannins and the posology is to consume 2.5 grams per 150 milliliters in an infusion for two minutes if it is used as a stimulant and for 10 to 20 minutes if it's used as an antidiarrheal coadjuvant so different time for different purposes and now we have to talk about adaptogenic plants plants that increase or enhance the body's defense capacity. Capacity against what? Against physical or psychological external aggression, acting in a prophylactic, protective manner. Adaptogens are capable of adapting the body to situations of stress, stimulating the non-specific resistance of the body. Some plants we can find here are the Eleuthero root and rhizome, the fruit and seed of Shisandra, this one here, the rhodiola root and rhizome, and the ginseng root, which is this one right here. We use the root, which must be at least six years old. And we can differentiate between white ginseng and red ginseng. The white one, we have to remove the external layers, washing and sun drying. Whereas the red one, it must be steamed and artificially dried or sun dried. Active ingredients of the ginseng root are the ginsenosides. 2-3%. These are indeed tetracyclic and pentacyclic triterpenic saponins. Saponins, detergent action, remember that. Heterogeneous polysaccharides are also present in form of panaxans. The action, adaptogen, of course, stimulant, it lowers the fatigue, it increases the memory, it has a blood pressure regulation, it is hypoglycemic, hypolipidemic, estrogenic, immunostimulant and antioxidant. Adverse effects may include insomnia, nervousness, hypertension, skin rashes, morning diarrhea and estrogenic effects. Interactions may include higher effects of the monamine oxidase inhibitors, oral antidiabetics, oral anticoagulants, antiplated agents, digitalis, estrogens and corticosteroids. Because remember that three terpenes are indeed very similar to steroids. Contraindications in cardiac disorders, hypertension, anxiety, nervousness, and of course, in pregnancy, lactation, and children. Posology, one to two grams a day of the drug, maximum three months. And we have to take it for at least three to four weeks to see the effects. Do not take before going to sleep, otherwise you will not be able to. And here we have to mention the ginseng root syndrome, which is due to the overconsumption of the root. And this is common, or used to be common, between university students. Because this medicinal plant could help you during exams to study better because it will lower the fatigue, increase the memory, and being adaptogen, adapt your body to this stressful situation. And then last but not least, we have migraine. It's an episodic disorder. It's a recurrent attack of pulsating unilateral headache. Very bad. It has neurological and gastrointestinal symptoms. The neurological one is called also aura, the aura of the migraine. These include headaches, moderate to severe pain, nausea, vomiting, sensitivity to light and sound, stress, hormonal changes, and rejection to food and drink. It also has a vascular phenomena, and uh, lower serotonin is correlated with higher migraines. Serotonin is the happiness hormone. If you're not happy, chances are you will have higher migraine. The vascular phenomena starts with an initial vasoconstriction of intracranial arteries, followed by 
a reactive vasodilation. That's why it's a pulsating headache. Preventive treatment and avoid triggering factors. So we can follow the prophylactic drugs, beta blockers, calcium antagonists, tracyclic antidepressants, antiepileptics, and serotonin antagonists, or we can use the plants, sedative and antispasmodic plants, analgesic and anti-inflammatory plants, fever few and butterbur are useful, we are going to see the fever few, and also pentazine has a spasmolytic effect that may help. So, the matricaria, or also called fever few, improves the migraine's evolution and it decreases the frequency of migraines and the intensity. The part we're going to use is the aerial part, sometimes only the leaves. The active ingredients is mainly the parphenolide, which is a sesquiterpene lactone, sesquiterpene 15 carbons. The action, anti-migraine, for sure, antiplatelet, anti-inflammatory, analgesic and antimicrobial. Adverse effects, well, at high doses, it can give mouth ulcers, contact dermatitis, rebound headaches, which is very bad, insomnia, abdominal pain, but also diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, and mucosal and tongue inflammation. So be careful with the dose. Interactions, higher effects of antiplatelet and oral anticoagulant drugs. So that synergism. Contraindications in hypersensitivity to matricaria, to the fever few, pregnancy, lactation, and this time for people under 18 years of age. As you can see, this is a more powerful drug. Physiology daily dose of migraine prevention is 50 to 120 milligrams of the powdered drug, which contains a two, from 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 milligrams of parphenolide. We have to take it for four to six months to observe a beneficial effect and gradually decrease the dose at the end to avoid complications. Okay, this is it for this video. I hope you understood everything I said. If you didn't, there is a comment section down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you get notified every time I upload a new video. If you find value in this, please share it to your friends and family to spread this knowledge to them as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one in which we're going to talk about the plants we use in the musculoskeletal pathologies. So stay tuned for more information on medicinal plants. Hope you enjoy it.